So, like we said, we left off where Ahithophel had given his advice to Absalom. Now, Absalom will turn to Hushai for his advice. So, it's chapter 17 of 2 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 1. This is lesson 23. David goes to Maenaim. All right. So, follow along here at verse 1. Moreover, Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Let me now choose out 12,000 men. Oh, we sorry. We said it was at the end of verse 4. He finished. Verse 5 of chapter 17. Then said Absalom, Call now Hushia, the archite also. Let us hear likewise what he said. And when Hushia was coming to Absalom, Absalom spake unto him, saying, Ahithophel hath spoken after this manner. Shall we do after his saying? If not, speak thou. And Hushai said unto Absalom, The counsel that Ahithophel has given is not good at this time. For, said Hushai, thou knowest thy father and his men, that they are mighty men, and they be chafed in their minds, as a bear robbed of her whelps in the field. And thy father is a man of war, and will not lodge with the people. Behold, he is hid now in some pit, or in some other place. And it will come to pass, when some of them be overthrown at the first, that whosoever heareth it will say, there is a slaughter among the people that follow Absalom. And he also that is valiant, whose heart is as the heart of a lion, shall utterly melt. For all Israel knoweth that thy father is a mighty man, and they which be with him are valiant men. Therefore I counsel that all Israel shall be generally gathered unto thee, from Dan even to Beersheba, as a sand that is by the sea for multitude, and that thou go to battle in thine own person. For so shall we come upon him in some place where he shall be found, and we will light upon him as the dew falleth on the ground. And of him, and of all the men that are with him, there shall not be left so much as one. Moreover, if he be gotten into a city, then shall all Israel bring ropes to that city, and we will draw into the river, until there be not, uh, until there be not one small stone found there. And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hushai the archite is better than the counsel of Ahithophel. For the Lord hath appointed to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel to the intent that the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. So as we said, here's Absalom with Ahithophel and Hushai. You read earlier Psalm 3, the words that David was writing while he was fleeing from his own son. Okay? So although the advice, and we said the advice of Ahithophel was the better advice, it was the right thing to do. Quickly, go now, small group, go after David, overtake him. And don't kill anyone, only David. Great advice. But Hushai knows it is good advice. And so the advice that I give needs to be a few things. Hushai knew this. I have to be confident. If I'm wishy-washy in my advice, well, maybe do this, well, maybe do that, they're going to listen to Ahithophel's advice. So I've got to go in there confidently. I've got to go in there boldly. I've got to maybe exaggerate a little and butter up Absalom, make him think highly of himself. Okay? That's one thing that he knows he has to do. The second thing he knows he has to do is buy David time. I need to get David time so that he can get further away from Absalom. The more time I can buy David, the better it will be for him. So I need to buy him time. So what is the advice of Hushai? Well, the third thing that he needed to do was he needed to make sure that he didn't make Ahithophel sound like an idiot, because Ahithophel's advice was really, really good. So he needs to somehow also convince Absalom, well, that was good advice, but, you know, it's not right now. That's very wise how he says it there. Look at that, he says, Ahithophel's advice is not good right now. That advice is good sometimes, but right now it's not very good advice. Okay? <coughs> You know that your father is a hero among the people. They adore him as a leader. Remember they used to shout, Saul is thousands and David is ten thousands. They know he's a good fighter. Okay? And your father will fight like a mother bear robbed of its whelps, its cubs. Right? No one wants to mess with a mother bear and, take their, and get in between a mother bear and its cubs. Oh, that mother bear will fight and fight and fight. No one wants to mess with that bear. Well, you have stirred up the hornet's nest as it is, Absalom. Now your father's angry. He's like a mother bear who's being kept from its cubs. If you go now, he's so angry, his men will be unbelievably valiant in battle, and you will not be able to defeat him because he is a very experienced warrior. Okay? 
He's probably getting ready right at this moment. He will fight with the, the fierceness of a lion. Right? Can't you see him getting ready right now, digging the ditches and in a ravine and, and standing there ready, waiting for you to come, Absalom? So, Absalom, when your men finally try to attack him, if you follow Ahithophel's advice and you finally attack even the hearts of your bravest soldiers will melt with fear as they charge toward David and his men because they'll see the determination. They'll see the look on his face. And your whole army will turn and fight and, or flee. So don't go tonight. No, 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 no. Here is the better advice. And then this is where Hushai says here, why don't you wait a little bit? Wait another day. Gather as large as an army you can. Because if you go right now, you're not going to have a large enough army. You'll have a larger army if you wait a little bit longer. Call everyone in. That's the first thing you should do. Just wait until tomorrow. Okay? So that's the first thing. Uh, and you might be concerned about waiting. Absalom, it doesn't matter. So what if my father is able, or your father is able to get into a city? We'll have enough men. We just throw some ropes up on the walls, and we'll have so much strength. We'll pull those walls right down into the into the ditch, into the moat that's around the city. No problem. Okay. So he's exaggerating here. All right. Well, it works. Absalom listens to the advice of Hushai. It buys David some time. Why did he listen? Not because Hushai's advice was better, but the Bible tells us right there. He did it, for the Lord had appointed to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel to the intent that the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. God was in control here. He wanted, would defeat Absalom. So, God is the one that causes Absalom to choose Hushai's advice. Remember how we said earlier, Ahithophel was like a Judas. He had been a wise counselor of David, but now he was a traitor and left him there. Well, if you uh, skip down to verse 23, it's kind of a jumpy, this chapter jumps around, but if you look at verse 23, you find out what happens to Ahithophel. He does the same thing Judas did. Verse 23, when Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his ass and arose and got him home to his house, to his city, and put his household in order and hanged himself and died and was buried in the sepulcher of his father. He hangs himself, just like Judas hung himself, because he's ashamed. He knows what he did was wrong. He left David. He knows that his advice is better than Hushai's. He knows what Hushai was trying to do because he's a wise counselor. That's his job, to be a wise counselor, to know what people mean. And he realizes that God is working here. He sins. He takes his own life. It was wrong. Ahithophel should have turned from Absalom and said, Absalom, this is what you should do. You should not over it. He should have gone back to David, but Ahithophel didn't do that. He took his own life. All right, so now we've got to get this message to David that he's going to have a little bit of time that Hushai has bought him some time. And if you remember, we talked a few lessons ago about how they were setting that up. Remember, David had sent Hushai back, and he had sent the priest back, okay, Abiathar. And some sons went back with him. Now they're going to use those sons. Verse 15. Then said Hushai unto Zadok and to Abiathar the priest, Thus and thus did Ahithophel counsel Absalom, and the others of Israel. And thus and thus have I counsel. Now therefore, sin quickly, and tell David, saying, Lodge not this night in the plains of the wilderness, but speedily pass over, lest the king be swallowed up, and all the people that are with him. Now Jonathan and Ahimeaz, those are the two sons, stayed by in Rogel, for they might not be seen to come into the city. And a wench went and told them. And they went and told King David. Nevertheless, a lad saw them and told Absalom. But they went, both of them, away quickly, and came to a man's house in Behurim, which had a well in his court. Picture that in your head, a well in some of the yard. Whether they went down, so they go down the well. And the woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth, and spread ground corn thereon, so like she was working there. And the thing was not known. And when Absalom's servants came to the woman to the house, they said, Where is it, Himeaz and Jonathan? And the woman said unto them, They be gone over the brook of water. And when they had sought and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. And it came to pass after they were departed, that they came up out of the well, and went and told King David, and said unto David, Rise, and pass quickly over the water, 
For thus hath Ahithophel counseled against you. Then David arose, and all the people that were with him, and they passed over Jordan by the morning light. There lacked not one of them that was not gone over Jordan. So Hushai doesn't waste any time here. Okay? Uh, he wants to get the warning out. He needs to get this message. His message is, it's dangerous to stay where you are, David. Get further. Cross all the way over the Jordan River. Get on the other side. Get on the east side of the Jordan River. It'll be safer over there. So how is he going to get that? Well, Hushai can't go directly to Ahimeaz and Jonathan. Okay? He can't even send any priests to them. He's got to do something different. Okay? Because these men have been fighting there. So there are spies watching for any men to bring word out to these, to these people. So instead they sent a girl called a wench, a maid of one of the high priests to pass the message. And she goes and she told those two men. However, some young boy did see this girl go tell those two and then those two take off. So this young boy runs back into Jerusalem and goes, tells Absalom what happened, that yes, it looks like some word has leaked out, and we'll get to David about what is going on. Okay? So, Jonathan and Ahimeaz, they also see the young boy running back into Jerusalem while they're taking off and going away, and they realize they need a diversion, they need a place to hide. And so they come to this house in Behurum, on the other side of Mount Olivet there. Somehow they must have known he was friendly to them. And again, hidden in well. The woman covered the well with a bunch of, of, of wheat and corn stuff to make it look like she was doing some of her harvesting work. Okay? And uh, then when the, the servants came, they knew this was the direction and the area they'd gone. It would make sense that these two men would have gone here first. It's probably maybe the first farm or place that they're coming to prom. So it makes sense that they're going here. And they asked the woman, she says, oh, yeah, yeah. They, they ran over the brook over there to the other side. So these men of Absalom go chasing off in that direction. They think, oh, we've got to hurt and catch them. And they aren't able that day to find him or catch him, so they go back. Meanwhile, once those other men have left and are out of the way, then uh, the, the, two, uh, the two boys there, Ahimeaz and Jonathan, they take off, and they finally do find David. And they tell him, pass over the Jordan River quickly tonight. Don't rest. I know you're old, and I know you're weary. You've got women and children. You've been traveling all day, but you've got to go, and you've got to go now. And David listens. He and his men and women and everyone with them, they cross over the Jordan River to safety. Okay? And now they're going to continue to flee on here. Verse 24, because you read verse 23, which is about Ahithophel killing himself. Then David came to Maenam, and Absalom passed over the Jordan, he and all the men of Israel with him. And Absalom made a mesa. Pay attention to that. Absalom made a mesa, captain of the host instead of Joab which Amasa was a man's son, whose name was Ithra, an Israelite that went into Abigail, the daughter of Nahash, sister of Zariah, Joab's mother. So Israel and Absalom pitched in the land of Gilead. And it came to pass, so now we're jumping back from Absalom to David. And it came to pass when David was come to Manam, that Shobi, the son of Nahash, of Rabbah, of the children of Ammon, and Maker, the son of Emilio, of Lodibar, and Barzillai, the Gileadite of Rogelam brought beds and basins and earthen vessels and wheat and barley and flour and parched corn and beans and lentils and parched pulse and honey and butter and sheep and cheese of kind for David and for the people that were with him to eat. For they said, the people is hungry and weary and thirsty <coughs> in the wilderness. So we see uh, Ahithophel kills himself. Absalom makes a mesa the captain of the host, instead of Joab. If you remember, Joab went over there. So Absalom probably is no longer trusting. Uh, probably after Ahithophel killed himself, he knew something was wrong. Well, if he trusts Joab, Joab's probably also on the side of David, so he can't trust him, so he makes Amasa, the new captain. Okay? So Amasa is made the new captain. We find that. We jump back to David. David and his men, they get out of there. They're able to flee to a city, Maenam. Three good godly men there, Shobi, Maker, and Barzillai, bring gifts of all kinds of foods and provisions, beds. They're showing their loyalty here to King David. They are loyal. They are not going to be on Absalom's side. And that gives David and his people rest, refreshment, energy, because they're going to be having to battle against Amasa and the hosts of Israel on the next day. So the war is going to begin. Uh, Absalom and his men are able to get over the Jordan River and, and begin to follow after David too. And that's what we'll see in our next lesson is what happens 
uh, during that battle on the other side of Jordan. So we'll see that then.